Dedicated nurse. Coming in out of a storm. Nasty old night. I had to drive home from work. I am so finished with snow. Look at that. It's almost twice the height of my SUV. My son's car over there was actually completely buried this morning. You could only see a little bit of the back. Kind of like that car across the street where that poor lady is shoveling. And yes, I went over and offered to help, but they have somebody paid to come and clear them out. So that one path you see, I did that. And then she came out and said, oh, no, no, I got someone paid to come and do it. So I don't feel bad watching her now. I am sick of snow. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with it now. Just finished clearing off, what, about 80 centimeters of snow I think we got. It's been snowing pretty much from Thursday until noon on Saturday. And uh, I was out last night uh, clearing out the end of the driveway. It was a mess. Uh, my wife was a nurse, so I had to get that cleared for her to get home and pull into, even though the roads weren't plowed. Then up again this morning at 6 o'clock or 6.15 to uh, go out and dig through that mess again so she can get out to go to work. And uh, had a little nap and then went out and finished off. The driveway, my son's car was actually buried, totally buried. Like it was, you could see a little bit of the trunk, but everything else was totally covered. He came out and helped clear that part, thank God. Now they say that this snow is what they call heart attack snow and that had me a little paranoid because uh, a couple times get started getting very nauseous when I was out uh, clearing the snow and I know nausea can be a, can be a symptom but I don't have any other symptoms I'm just going to keep drinking my coffee which is probably not a good idea and medicate because uh, and get warm because my feet are froze now anyway welcome to this weekend all right enough of looking at this stuff today these curtains are closing there one of the things i mentioned in the past a few times is uh, dealing with hyper vigilance where you hear noises and a lot of times the noises they trigger you they agitate you they just like i've been pacing the house for about an hour now because of snow blowers <laughs> it sounds crazy and silly and trivial but it's true it's like i hear them and I, every muscle in my body is just clenched and i like i just i'm just angry and agitated and enraged by it and i can't help but going to the window looking out and cursing the snowblower <laughs> it's uh it's messed up that's what it is like the mind like how how the mind can impact your daily life is it's pretty remarkable to say the least because right now because of that hyper vigilance like my anxiety is through the roof i can't focus on anything i can't I got music playing in the background. That's about the best I can do because I can't watch a show because just, like all I hear is snow blowers. And I can't read, can't write. It's uh, it's frustrating, and it's a curse because uh, maybe I'll throw on, throw on my noise canceling headphones or something. But uh, it's a it's a curse. It's it's horrible. Like I I know. Most of you think, oh, hearing a few snowblowers, there's nothing to it. But it's not just snowblowers. It could be a car horn. It could be a kid just laughing, walking down the street. It could be neighbor's dog barking. Anything and everything that I hear, I have to check it out or investigate or wonder what it is. And there's multiple, multiple sounds that really go right through me. It's like nails on a chalkboard kind of thing except they end up causing i don't know what you 
almost inducing like an anxiety attack in a sense it's uh I know it's it's hard to explain and it's and probably most of you probably wouldn't understand it but uh, um, I don't know you hear night nails on the board like that's it you hear it and you cringe and that's it it's done it's over with but just imagine hearing those nails over and over and over and over when nobody else does you're the only one hearing them that's the way this hyper vigilance crap seems to be working because like my son don't notice anything my wife doesn't notice anything and I'm sure most of the people making noises or doing whatever are oblivious that they're triggering somebody. And uh, that's, that's one of the hardest aspects of PTSD I think to deal with is the hypervigilance because it, uh, it just makes me restless, agitated, and uh, just ruins my day. A little snow in my backyard. Tempted to close these curtains too. 420 it's a sign maybe I will actually no I gotta drive in an hour so no I won't I'm responsible hey this is me making the last video you watched rendering somebody's been naughty yeah I deserve Mary Brown's after all that snow clearing today look at those taters An awesome buffalo chicken. Give you an idea how much snow we had. You can see it halfway up their window on their deck. My deck is all cleared now, but let me just look over there. Yeah. Enough of this now. We got 50 milliliters of rain coming, or millimeters of rain. It is now Monday morning. Good morning, Cowan Heights. Thank God there's no snow in my driveway to clear today because I don't know if I would have done it. We're supposed to get a little bit of snow here soon, followed by about 50 millimeters of rain. Hopefully that doesn't cause too much flooding. And then two days after that, we got about 15 centimeters of snow coming, more bloody snow. Like why the heck do people even live in this province? I don't know. Many days I feel like it's Groundhog Day. Make a coffee. Drink a coffee. Read a book. Drink a coffee. Read a book. Drink a coffee. Come on, you can go faster than that. Let's go. Pour. I did sleep a little better, if that makes you feel any better. Not the greatest, not as long as, as I'd like, but it was better than the previous nights. So I guess that's a good thing. We'll see if that lasts. I'm still not feeling any motivation or inspiration or anything like that. I'm sure the weather, it probably is contributing somehow. It's got to because as soon as I changed my tire on my motorcycle, the, the snow storms just started coming. So it's playing with me. It's messing with my head. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pissed me off. People going with the shovels now. <laughs> the crowd over there may never get mail again. There's the mailbox. The road goes out there. You can see where the garbage cans, that's where the roads are. But people use that as a dumping ground for all the snow. And it blocks it off every time. I noticed that we're coming up on my 10th week of treatments 
and uh, I haven't left the house a lot in the last uh, two and a half months and that's concerning I know it is because I'm digging myself in this little corner and I am I have no interest of leaving this corner that's the thing right now it's like I sometimes I almost embrace those storms as much as I hate them it's like there's a psychological part of me that goes well I don't have to go anywhere now because it's storming out and there's a little tiny bit of relief in that part but uh, I know I need to get out and get doing things because the going on three months of uh, pretty much being trapped in my house self-imposed traps because I can't deal with all the appointments and I just uh, that's it I can't deal with them I just uh, I shut down and I can't do anything until the appointments over and then of course there's another appointment coming that brings on the next uh, I guess uh, round of not wanting to go anywhere and being miserable but I keep saying I'll get out there just gotta wait for that snow to finally melt and feel spring this time yeah this is the worst year ever for me I usually love and embrace winter I'm always out hiking I'm out with snowshoes I go out taking videos and pictures but I uh, haven't, haven't done any of that this winter. Nothing, none of it. And, uh, and I'm feeling it, that's for sure. But uh, hopefully now once the weather clears up, if it ever does, maybe by June, uh, hopefully uh, once I get the motorcycle out for that first ride, I'm hoping that that's gonna take hold and start saying yes freedom again i can get out ride my motorcycle and just enjoy the sights the smells the air temperature changes all those little things that that start trickling through your system and just waking things up and different nerves you notice different stuff so i'm hoping fingers crossed that uh, that in a few weeks uh, i'll be back out on a motorcycle and not uh, making these videos Although I might still keep making these videos, but include the motorcycle rides in them. We'll see. I'm kind of a nice neighbor. I always make sure their dryer vent is clear when it's uh, after a snow. Look how high that is out there. You see it's higher than my vehicle. All I can say is thank God for snow blowers. I don't know how they did it back in the day. Nature sounds. My little reading buddy. And some Stephen King. Okay, you can stop watching now. Close enough, I think. By the time I get my jacket and boots on, it'll be 420. Lucky.
thought there was another one in there. Just in time. Well, the freezing rain has started. That's supposed to turn to rain in another hour or two. We're supposed to get about 50 millimeters. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully nobody needs to get into the basement. It'll be thawed by June. Three minutes to spare before Jeopardy. I just realized I already have enough esteem issues that I probably shouldn't be watching Jeopardy because that's not very good for my uh, my confidence right now. This is more my intellectual level, I think. 10.03 p.m. Is everybody else like me? You sneak around when nobody's around and you do your binging. It's guilt, shame, disgust. It's, these are all the types of feelings I feel towards myself when I'm doing this. But uh, I, I can't help it. I get into these, an addictive mindset and I start binging spoonful after spoonful of peanut butter. And uh, and I panic, I get angry if it gets interrupted by somebody. It's, um, it's weird, I know. Hypervigilance is a curse. I can't help but listen to that beep and watch that little excavator clear snow and hope he doesn't come to my <laughs> yard with it. Although he doesn't really care where he puts his stuff. Well, it's Tuesday morning and I was hoping that that rain was going to take away a bit more snow than it did. I don't think it took away any. I think I just soaked into the snow and it's probably going to freeze now. Spring is coming. That's all I got to remember. Now, as long as once spring comes, I actually leave the house. That's another thing because this is, uh, I kind of got myself uh, in a defensive position here in my fortress and uh, I don't really want to leave. I mean, I got my coffee here. Why would I want to leave, right? My wife is in the basement working out right now, so I got to steal one of her K-cups. I find a breakfast blend it's a bit too light for me. I like it uh, a medium strength or medium roast or a dark roast. But this will work. At least I have my phone which allows me to record silly little clips of me every now and then to keep me busy while I'm waiting for that miraculous moment to arrive where I can just go outside and be free. I don't know if that'll happen ever, but that's uh, 
that's my goal. I just want to be free to get out and enjoy nature, go for a ride on my motorcycle, clear my head, go to a beach somewhere, just listen to the sounds of the ocean, smell the salt water, listen to the waves crash off the shore. That's not much to ask for. That's all I want. That's all I need. Yet I, uh, I'm struggling getting out of the house to even do that. So you can imagine how I feel when I gotta get out of the house to go do a chore. <laughs> if I don't wanna go out of the house to go and enjoy nature. My psychologist, my psychiatrist, my case manager at Veterans Affairs, they're all after me to get an occupational therapist. And that's basically someone who would work with me to help me through my struggles, whether it could be administrative stuff, it could be just getting off my ass and doing chores around the house or getting outside, out in public, things like that. But I am absolutely resistant to it. I had one before and it didn't work out for me and I kind of got that lingering in the back of my mind. But at the same time, it's like I'm don't feel like I'm ready to get outside yet, if that makes sense. I don't want to be pulled, dragging, kicking and screaming. I want to be able to try to figure out how to sneak out and get back out in the world on my own without having to have somebody hold me by the hand and do it, if that makes sense. But I see the other side of it. It's now been nine weeks, ten weeks since I've actually been out anywhere doing anything so there's a problem and I recognize that and it's been ongoing probably for close to a year now with me kind of becoming reclusive almost like a hermit it's like I yeah I'm building my own little fortress here and I and I don't want to leave it and it's getting harder every day to do that so maybe I do need the occupational therapist, but I'm terrified of the occupational therapist because the occupational therapist is going to make me do things that are going to make me kick and scream. And I mentally right now, I'm drained and I don't really know if I'm ready or capable of even um, approaching that or dealing with that. So we'll see. I still got a few weeks to decide on the occupational therapist. And of course, there's guilt that kicks in too from not taking advantage of the, the occupational therapist because I know that if I take advantage of it, there's probably a good chance that I might be able to get out there and do things and maybe even be a bit more of a responsible human being, like be more useful around the house, being more of a husband, being a better father. Maybe it might get me out in the community and do some volunteer work. I don't know. So I, I see all this stuff, but I'm terrified. That's, that's, that's where it gets stuck. Cause like, I, I just have all these fears and, uh, expectations, anticipations. It's, uh, and it's a bit much. I think I am going to meditate and read some more of Holly. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to end this video. And uh, thank you again for dragging your lives out by watching these boring clips of me working my way through my daily life or whatever you want to call it. And uh, getting some insight into uh, the trials and tribulations of me. But I do appreciate you watching, and I appreciate anybody who leaves messages and uh, any support, because it's, uh, it's important. And I'm glad that nobody's running away from, from this, because I know mental health issues tend to drive people away. It's, it's like taboo for some people. Some people just can't handle it. They don't, I don't know, for whatever reason. But anyway, I'm here to say, screw you guys, because we need to smash that stigma. So the ones that are supportive, keep doing it. The ones that are this way, get through the stigma. You start to realize that people are people and they're dealing with things that 
you may not see or notice and it has an impact on them that may, you may not understand or fully comprehend. And uh, on that note, again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.